talking about an initiative called Have a Dream and actually it's quite an interesting initiative inspired by the famous speech of Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream where he spoke about diversity and living together despite our appearances or differences. We have a dream as well uh, uh, of getting the youth together from all over the world out of their comfort zones where they could discover the world and get to know each other while breaking all the stereotypes. Have a Dream is an organization that was initiated in 2014 by a group of young Egyptians who were inspired by the rich experiences they had while traveling and dreamed of giving the chance to the Egyptian youth in particular and youth from all over the world to get out of the cocoon and be introduced to different cultures as well. And joining us to talk to us about uh, their experience, we have with us uh, Doniel Fouli, and she's a member of Have a Dream organization, as well as uh, Salma Halouda. Welcome with us. Thank you very much. Well, uh, thank you for coming, Donia and Salma. Uh, I know it's very hot today, so <laughs> yes. it's great having you. And now, girls, tell me, uh, what are the objectives of the organization? Uh, having a dream. Uh, the idea is to promote the idea of um, traveling with purpose. Um, we send our volunteers to travel abroad to be exposed to new cultures. Um, so the idea is to promote the idea of um, not traveling for tourism only, but also to travel for um, a cause, uh, like for example, eradicating literacy abroad, uh, farming, building, stuff like that. Uh, as the idea of traveling like here in Egypt is just restricted in immigration and working in the Gulf countries yes. and sometimes uh, tourism. But we're trying to introduce a new culture that's actually pretty popular in, um, especially in Europe and developed countries that you actually can go and uh, go another country and participate in social activities like volunteering or camps. So that's what we're trying to do here in Egypt. So yeah, yeah. those are the objectives. Now, how do you choose your candidates? Uh, okay, our candidates. Um, Okay, we don't have like high uh, standards, it's just we need someone with potential to learn from the experience. Um, flexible, because um, it's not tourism, it is something that requires commitment uh, with the schedule and you have responsibilities and duties and the culture is different so you have to be flexible and adaptable. So this is um, one of uh, our, yeah. Sanders and what else? We have also, for if the, if the program is about teaching, so we, uh, teaching English for example, so we have like basic requirements for uh, English language proficiency. Um, we're not looking for the perfect volunteer because we need to contribute in building his character. So we're looking for basic skills, basic independence, basic flexibility skills. Um, the uh, the, the um, potential is to coexist and potentials to actually benefit from the idea, from the, the um, project itself or the opportunity at, in a whole. But to be honest with you, traveling is the dream of every, almost every <laughs> human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. And my motto has always been since I was a, a, a young girl, traveling was free, you would never see me. <laughs> so I think that funding or the money is an issue for anyone who, who wants to travel it's not about because and part even if it's tourism I mean part if you're going as a tourist to any country is to be exposed to the culture yeah. so it shouldn't be a problem I mean going to expose the culture and also presenting your own culture shouldn't be a problem I think money is the main problem here am I right uh, well of course money is problem of course and um, and that's why we're trying in our organization and our programs to um, have like minimum like we provide uh, the least cost uh, possible uh, like uh, organizing programs abroad it sometimes in m most of pro uh, most of uh, hosting organization require fees yes mm. but we try we try to negotiate the fees and sometimes just uh, um, uh, like the organization <laughs> provides the accommodation and the how uh, and the uh, food as well, um, and we try for the flight ticket uh, for the uh, for the flights. Uh, we try to get like group discounts because we're traveling in groups, so we try to get discounts and minimize the cost as much as possible. Um, but the, uh, the like we benefit in exchange for the uh, the costs they pay. Um, also, like we keep convincing our volunteers that we're traveling for a purpose. We're traveling. We're volunteering, so do not expect something fancy. Mm. So most of the costs are actually covered by the hosting organization. 
so it shouldn't be a problem. Now, yeah. in terms of finance, as uh, Ella was mentioning now, so the volunteers, they don't pay anything or do they have to share in uh, the traveling uh, uh, expenses? They, yes, they pay the uh, flight tickets, uh, they, they pay that, and also they pay um, a specific amount for have a dream, uh, administrative fees, because we have like a really uh, uh, large members participating mm -hmm. in the group. Yeah. So we just pay this for it to cover our costs. Uh, but the, we don't require any other fees and sometimes the hosting organization as well requires some fees. We try to negotiate that, but uh, as I said, we're looking for minimizing all the costs as much as possible. Uh, actually, sometimes uh, this is one of the things that we're trying our best to do, the, to provide things that's uh, fully funded. We're working on it this while mm -hmm. and also we are doing the, um, the installing um, um, yeah, the installing process, just uh, not to pay the full amount if the... Installments, uh, installments yeah. Installments. Yeah, installments, yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, so that uh, things get easier. And it, this, there is this, um, uh, something that I really want to highlight, that there is a huge difference between tourism and the programs we're trying to provide. Uh, tourism, yes, you go and you meet other cultures and everything, but in our programs you get to stay in schools, in school dorms with students and you get to eat with them at lunch and you get to do their daily activities so it's like you're living like locals actually yes it's like really like a local so it's um, the experience is different in terms you know of what? when i was a university student actually in my senior year in college uh, i went to, to to germany as part of a similar program uh, but it was organized by the ministry of youth okay. and the ministry of youth got uh, some kind of student exchange program where students from around the world came to Egypt and Egypt sent uh, wow. students Youth to exchange. many countries. I remember back then, many years ago, <laughs> uh, we had Germany, France, Tunisia, and I don't remember the Where did you go, Ella? Because I, I went did to that, Germany. I, I did that, uh, but as a, uh, for my senior year, it was uh, in the United States. I went, I went to Germany and um, I, we were like uh, 20 uh, Egyptian students, okay? Uh, no, we were 18, four girls mm -hmm. and the rest were, were boys. Mm -hmm. We had a problem because we were staying, as you mentioned, in schools where they uh, evacuated the, the, uh, the class furniture, the classroom furniture. Okay. And they had mattresses on the floor and there were like boys and girls sharing mixed together sharing the same room. That was a problem for us Egyptians yeah. because we said no, we should have a room for yeah. us, yes. uh, for girls only. We and do that. We, of course we it wasn't a problem for the guys, but it was a problem for us. <laughs> Okay. We always make sure that the, the uh, accommodation is always separated by gender and thing. the toilets as well. Okay, yeah. so how different is what I'm mentioning uh, to your program? How different? Um, is it the same? Because I, I, was, I was part of a program um, uh, affiliated to the Ministry of Youth. It was a government program. Okay. Well, yeah. actually, the, uh, when, when it comes to accommodation, we say that the accommodation is modest, it's pretty modest. But we make sure with the basics, because we are uh, fully aware of the culture of Egyptians. Like, we have traveled, me and Dunya. Mm. And a uh, separated uh, accommodation is a must for us. Like, we talked with the hosting organization and we have a template mm. with the basic things that's a must we need to check. Like the accommodation, if it's uh, separated uh, by gender, the by toilets, or, uh, mm. we try to make it as much as possible separated by gender. Mm. We try to adjust the, prog the program to uh, the Egyptian culture. So uh, we, we also try to provide uh, halal meals, uh, make sure that the organization mm. provides that. Yeah. Um, uh, everything we try to adjust it to um, the I'm Egyptian culture. I'm to work on all these problems because yeah. back in my time, we had a problem. Oh yeah, yes, it, yeah. Does, it does actually, many organizations doesn't have problem with the gender mixing and so we, ha we had to make sure before uh, making a partnership with them. Yep. Now, you're right now part of the organization team, but did you before that travel yes. within the organization? Uh, I traveled to China last year. This mm. was the first time for me to travel and travel with Have a Dream. Um, being exposed to a completely different culture with all the language barriers and everything. Mm. Uh, so when I came back, like I decided I, I want to complete this path and I joined Have a Dream as a member. And a couple of months ago I traveled to Malaysia and this time I was the group leader. Uh, so it was a huge change. First time, first trip, I uh, was the first time to travel and the second time. You were a group time. leader and that, you were that young. Yes, the because, group leader because when I traveled members. we had very old group leaders who were not involved with us in mm. any of the activities they were just staying home uh, that's the thing I had like the group like uh, a lot of people were older than me but we understood this idea like we came over it um, but um, 
I wasn't like being a boss or what something. What were your just responsibilities as, as a group leader? As a group leader, I was like the link between the members and the organization. So if he wants to give him any idea about the schedule, um, the timings and stuff, so I, I would give it to the volunteers. Make sure that everything was punctual as much as possible. Uh, we had to divide ourselves into classes, and everyone has a specific task. So um, my job was more of a coordinating that everything was going right. Also linking the volunteers and what's happening uh, um, in Malaysia to what to the organization in Egypt because we also make sure that uh, we follow up with the volunteers even after they travel, after they come back. We, get their feedback okay. so following up with the volunteers the organize the hosting organization the standing organization now you are a trip leader in a country that you haven't traveled to before now uh, were there certain challenges in terms of that the challenges for being a leader no in a country that you haven't been in before oh, to be a leader there yeah. um, it wasn't the difficult uh, like, uh, the thing, I didn't expect it to be difficult. Malaysia was one of the easiest countries I've been to. Um, the language barrier like, almost doesn't exist. Um, it was um, very, a very easy task, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Um, Salma, is there a minimum and maximum age for the volunteers to join? Well, there is a minimum, but there is not maximum. Uh, so I can join? Of course <laughs> you can, of course, please. please come. I'm in, okay. Yes, okay. please. <laughs> uh, the age starts from 18 and to whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. That's great news. <laughs> yes, yes. Most of our programs does not sign me up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Sure. Now I'd like to ask you also about uh, the uh, the countries you run tours or uh, programs at. So do you have other uh, have a dream uh, offices all over these destinations or not necessarily? We're working on that and we managed to have our own branch in Indonesia. We're working uh, one of actually the co-founder, his name is Walid Aydin. Uh, he traveled to Egypt last month and he's going to travel to several countries uh, to establish like um, our branches. So he's going to go through Indonesia, India, Nepal and Pakistan on, and Pakistan as well. So we're working on that, yes. And we're working actually on establishing our own school uh, in, in I guess. Uh, so, so that we send volunteers to our own schools there. So we're going global. <laughs> Before you girls came in, we were discussing um, the issue of Egypt's relations with other African countries and the importance of integrating, because Egypt is yeah, part and parcel, of course, of Africa, and we were talking about the African Union Summit in Kigali. I believe that what you're doing could be part of the whole strategy. Sure. Uh, don't you think that you, we need to send uh, Egyptians or uh, Egyptian volunteers to African countries because Definitely. Africa needs to be exposed and we need to introduce ourselves as Egyptians because the, the Dr. Temer was with us, he said that many African countries don't know about us and there is some sort of, we need to strengthen the cultural gaps. Um, I believe definitely. what you're doing, traveling could be one, one of the Actually, aspects. one of our passions is Africa. We mm. wanted to conduct more programs there. So far we've been to Ghana three times and uh, South Africa, there are a group actually flying right now to go right to South Africa. Right now, 10 members are traveling to South yes. Africa. And um, uh, that's, that's completely true because when we went to a program in Ghana, the hosting organization was uh, writing the names of the volunteers that came from Egypt. And the volunteers told us when they came back that they, they were the first Egyptians on that list. Like uh -huh. There were all kinds of nationalities from Europe, from the United States, from even Asia, but none from uh, Egypt. Yeah. So they were the first. So yeah. actually, I think we're doing something, we're going in the path that we, yeah. we need to spread. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Doniel Fuli, as well as uh, Salma Haluda, thank you very much for this interview. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, now it's time to look at a report about uh, the Alexandrian band Surur, which held a music concert recently in Cairo. The band is known for its blends of uh, Oriental and uh, Western tunes. More with our colleague uh, Nada Rabia. <laughs> 